In this video, we're gonna take this photo and we will transform it to this photo using Lightroom and Photoshop. Welcome back, my name is Matt Klaskowski. I love doing these before and after videos just because they show you how much is possible um, with, with, I think, you know, not too many settings and adjustments to get to a great place for a photo. Uh, this one in particular uh, was from uh, just a, an amazing photo shoot in Zion where the light was spectacular. Um, incredible clouds rolling in, some weather rolling in, and this beautiful light started shining through onto the peaks of the mountains. But the photos felt a little bit, fell a little bit flat once I got them onto the computer, which I think we've all experienced. So let's jump in and see what we can do. We'll start off over here in the basic panel. Uh, just remember that all of these settings are identical inside of Adobe Camera Raw and also inside of Lightroom. So when you go there, you have all of your same settings, all of your same masking tools. Going over here to the basic panel, I think you know we could do, you know, a lot of times I used to start a lot of things globally. So we'd you know, make the whole photo brighter, whole photo darker. Um, as, as tools have progressed, I find myself doing less and less from the basic global standpoint and more and more with masking tools. But I think overall, we could probably bump up the shadows a little bit, also increase, just generally increase the exposure a bit. Um, all depends on your plan for the photo. My plan is, is you know, try to get this area looking pretty good and then do some specific adjustments to the sky. So I think, I think from an overall perspective, I'm, I'm where I need to be when it comes to the, the, the global adjustments here, as far as the basic panel goes. I might warm that up just a hair as well. I'll go down here to the lens corrections. I think it's always a good idea. Enable profile corrections. You never know when you get uh, a little bit of distortion. Uh, you can turn on chromatic aberration. It's not really gonna make a, a big difference for the photo, but we'll turn that on as well. And then come back up here toward the top to take a look at the basics. So the, the interesting thing here is I wanna do some specific adjustments to the mountains and to the cloud or to the sky back here. If I were to do that globally, then I run the risk of, you know, I, I want to add a little bit more detail to these hills in the background. Well, I'm going to do it with clarity, but to me, clarity sometimes makes trees and certain things look a little bit artificial, a little bit too contrasty. So I'm going to choose not to do that globally. I'm also going to choose not to worry about the sky and do that with the masking tools here. So let's work on the mountains in the background first. I'll go to the object selection tool is a pretty good tool for that because all I have got to do here is just give a basic outline to the area. And it should do a good job of making a mask. Uh, if I need to, you can see it missed a little bit down there. Just click on my mask so it rolls down a little bit. Click on add, go click on objects again and Click there and see if that takes care of it, and it does. So now I have that whole area selected as good as I need it to be. I don't need it to be perfect along the bottom, and I want to add a little bit of a little bit more detail, a little bit more contrast to it. It looks it looks hazy to me. So I'm going to go down to the effects panel with the masking tools, and clarity for me would probably be the tool that I would choose here. All right, so we'll just add some clarity to that. I think overall I might even go over to tone, increase the whites. A little bit, make it a little bit brighter. But I think just the clarity works really well there. It adds a nice amount of contrast without making things look too textured, which the texture adjustment can do. And I'm not saying you can't add texture. You That might be a really good adjustment for hills and uh, mountains and things in the background. A lot of times we use the haze for this. My only problem with the haze is, in this case, it makes it too dark or too bright, depending on which way you go with that. And um, it gets a little bit technical, some of the differences between clarity and texture and dehaze, but just essentially think clarity is working along, along the lines of the mid-tones, the middle gray areas, okay? Where some of the other tools, texture is really just more making things look more textured. Clarity is actually adding contrast, but to a specific area. In fact, you know what? Let's hop, I think I had it open in Camera Raw. I can show you an example here. So in Camera Raw, we can go down along the right-hand side here, along the very, very bottom, you'll see a little eyedropper tool, right? Lightroom doesn't have this, but if you go to camera, you see this little eyedropper tool, at least the eyedropper that I'm using, it's got a white balance eyedropper. And what I'll do is I'll just drop a point right on the mountain back here. It's a good, good little, good little sidestep for us here to just see a demonstration of this. I'll go over to my effects panel 
And watch what happens as I move clarity. You see the RGB numbers here? If those move, if those move in a large extent, in a, in a, in a fast type of a, a way as I move an adjustment, you're, you're gonna see that it would make things brighter or darker very, very quickly. So watch when I, even if I crank clarity up, watch, it was at 190, 152, I'll crank clarity all the way up 195, 157. So they went higher, which is means brighter. The larger the number, 255 is the max, and that would be white across RGB, 000 would be black. So if I crank that up, you'll see it doesn't move a lot, right? But check this out, watch when I go to dehaze, uh, and go to the left would make it darker. So watch, or no, to make it brighter. So watch, look at what it does there. Look how fast those numbers change. Look when I move it to the right. Look how fast those numbers change, right? Again, bring it back to zero, 190, bring it to the right, 217. So you can see it's actually, it is it is adding contrast and it's making things less hazy, but it's also making things a lot darker when you do it this way. So there's a place for everything, it's just, for me, for this photo, the place is, I think, clarity is gonna make those, those hills and mountains look better than doing texture or dehaze. Speaking of adding clarity, we can add clarity to your photo editing as a horrible, horrible segue to a word from our sponsor, which by the way is always me. But um, if you're interested in these types of videos, I have a, a course series called No Light, No Problem. And they follow a lot of what we're doing here where we, we've got a good foundation for a photo. It just falls a little bit flat, like literally falls flat in the way that you're looking at it. We can use a lot of these masking adjustments, these local adjustment tools to add more depth and dimension to it. So it contains a number of videos very similar to this we just dive a little bit more deep. I always give you my thought process and why I'm doing something along the way. It's always one of my top selling courses. Very, very affordable. You can follow along with the videos. And the best part is it's it's all actually pretty short. So you're not devoting an hour into each video. You can learn something, follow along with the video, follow along with the photo, make those techniques your own because you've done them and then move and try to use those on your own photography as well. So I hope you'll swing by the website and check it out. Okay, so I'll top back over here. So that's why a little side story there on why I like clarity for this adjustment because I don't want to affect the overall brightness and darkness of these mountains. Let's go to the top here, create another new mask. We'll do select sky. And I like the mood, I like the drama here. I'm actually gonna add to it a little bit. Um, when I was there, it felt like that, that dark sky was really rolling in. So we're gonna bring that down just a little bit, okay? And then the last thing I might do is create one more new mask, go to the brush tool, increase the exposure a little bit, hit the left and right bracket key, make sure your feather is all the way up at 100, and then sometimes for just a little bit of a play of light, I'll just brush along just the peak, just in the middle. So it's not going to the top, it's not going to the bottom, it's just in the middle. And it just kind of kind of gives you I think if you were to think of it this way, kind of gives your eyes something to peek at because it is getting a little bit brighter opposed to some of those areas above and below it that are darker, but it's not saying, hey, put all your attention down here. Whereas if I were to do something like that, that would say, hey, put all your attention down here. So I'm just kind of saying, hey, give me a look, but I, I want you moving somewhere else in the photo. So something along those lines. Uh, up at the top of the masks panel, you can see there's a little eyeball icon, so I'll click that. That turns the masking off and on. To me, that's depth and dimension in a photo. That's very flat, that's depth and dimension. So the very, very different things inside of there. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn that mask off. Now, I could finish things off here. I could go in here and add a little bit of a vignette just to focus your attention in. Um, that'd be a good way, I think, to, to finish. If you're just going to do Lightroom only, that'd be a good way to finish the photo off. Oh, one other thing. I, I could do this inside of Lightroom. And if I were to do Lightroom only, I would. I would go to the little healing brush up here. And I'll probably just go to the magic, uh, the magic healer, whatever the heck that tool is called up there, the content aware remove. And I would probably just, there's a little sign down here. So I'd probably just get rid of that little sign and it should do a pretty good job because it's a small distraction down here. So 
and I could leave it, that'd be fine. If I were to just stay in Lightroom, we could almost call the, the photo done, hit the backslash key, that's before, backslash key, that's after. I might add a little bit of contrast, but we'll see that toward the end because I'm actually gonna take my vignette off of this because I don't wanna do the vignette just yet. Um, I wanna do a sky replacement, okay? So I'm gonna jump over to Photoshop for this. We just go over here to Photo, Edit In, and we can edit into Photoshop. And uh, I still have uh, Photoshop 2023 installed, so I just had to tell it 2024. Um, but once it gets over there, it's gonna make a copy of the photo. And I, for me, th there was so much great looking sky around this image that doesn't get seen inside of this photo. Let me cancel out the camera raw because it won't open if I don't. So there's so much great looking sky that doesn't get seen in this photo. The sky was so dramatic and just had so many cl big clouds and everything. You see the beautiful light that this dark sky was causing with some uh, light beams kind of coming in through some of the holes in the clouds, but you're just not seeing the really dramatic sky in this angle, but the light looked cooler in this angle. So we'll head up here to the edit menu. I'm gonna go down to the sky replacement tab and it will open the sky replacement window. From here, let's go to picking out the right sky for us. Um, I've got some skies in here. I've got uh, my own personal library of skies here. So I'm choosing one of the overcast ones. Um, you could go through some of the default Adobe ones. Spectacular will probably have. Spectacular's got a, a decent overcast one inside of there. So a couple of different ways you can go, but I'm gonna go under my own skies here and I'll choose one of the overcast options. What I'm looking for here, and this is the hardest part of sky replacement, is find something that matches. Find something that's very, very cloudy, but also gives us the appearance that there are some breaks in the clouds that this light could be coming through in. And this guy does a good adjust or a good, uh, good option for that one. Okay, so we'll go ahead. I don't really even have to uh, manipulate the settings too much. I might warm the sky just a hair, maybe even make it a little bit darker. There we go. I think that looks good like that. And we'll click OK. And it rolls all those adjustments up here into a little group. Now, to get back to Lightroom, all we got to do is hit File, Save. Uh, we don't have to change the name or location or anything like that. That'll save a copy for us. And then we can switch back over into Lightroom Classic, where what we'll eventually see is we'll see we have our original photo here. And then what will pop up next to it is going to be the photo that came back from Photoshop. Now this is where there's no saying that we can't do, we can't do micro adjustments to this photo. I would say try to always get your big color and exposure adjustments done pretty quick, but there's nothing wrong with doing some micro adjustments. Um, I, sometimes I click auto when I come back just to see what it gives me. It just gives me, cause it's really good for contrast. I think overall it, it boosted the whites a little bit too much there, so I'll pull those back. I don't really think I need any more shadow adjustment. I think the highlights worked okay, but it did also pull back on the blacks, which is gonna give me some, again, some contrast. Hit the backslash key, that's before, that's after. And I like to do those adjustments, especially after a sky replacement or a composite, because it ties everything together. I think overall I might just warm the photo a little bit more. Still gonna pull back on exposure, just still looking a little too bright for me. And then go down and remember before we went to the effects panel and we added a little bit of a vignette to it. Again, just to tie everything in, take our attention off of the edges, focus everything in toward the middle of the photo, especially for landscape photos that tends uh, to work out really well. Okay, so if you wanna see a before and after here, let's go ahead we can go to the original photo. We can hit reset on that one. So that's our before photo and that is our after. Let's hide some of the panels again. There is our before photo and there is our after. I've also got a great video to follow up this one on three ways to refine some of your automatic AI selection tools that we have inside of Lightroom and also Camera Raw. So if you're looking for another video to go to next and you like using some of those local adjustment uh, automatic AI masking tools, that's a great one to go to next.